Hey folks, Ryan here from Mr. House Gaming, and I got a real special video here for you today where I'm going to be talking about my top games of 2023 that I've played so far. There is a long list of games that have come out in 2023 that I absolutely enjoyed, and there's also a really long list of games that I have still yet to play that I think would actually come onto this list if I actually had a chance to play them. So, that's why this is the top games so far. If you want to check out the games that really got me um, excited to play that I haven't played yet, check out the description of this video. I've got a link to that video right there. So without further ado, let's get into the top game experiences that I have had in 2023. Starting off with number 10 here, where, you know what? This is a really recent game. But after the very few plays that I've had of it, I really, really enjoy it. And that is Unmatched Adventures, Tales to Amaze, designed by Jason Hager, Darren Reckner, obviously published by Restoration Games. And this takes the very familiar, very familiar unmatched battle system, but it allows us to play solo or cooperative against a couple big bad scenarios. I am a real big fan of that idea of taking that, what was originally a competitive head-to-head -head style of game and taking it from competitive and now making it cooperative or even if you want to play it solo. I really like that idea. You get, you're reaching a much bigger market. And I think that this game system was developed really, really well. The challenge of the scenarios is, I think, just about right. Um, sometimes leaning towards a little bit on the easier side, but also on the side of, oh, if I don't pull this off right now, I am not going to be able to uh, win the scenario but it stays true to the unmatched system where the actions you're taking are very, very simple and very and, and card driven by your deck of cards. And I also really love the fact that you don't just have to play with the four characters that come inside of this box. You could actually also play with any of your other unmatched characters, creating some really wild um, scenarios. Like I even saw a picture out there of somebody taking the T-Rex from the T-Rex set and battling them against Mothman. Like how epic and cool is that? So Unmatched Adventures Tales to Amaze provided a really solid foundation. Can't wait to see what they also come up with. That is my number 10 for this year. My number nine game for this year was something that I wasn't actually expecting to like as much as I did. Even though it is a fairly simple family style game, I really, really loved it. And that is Shake That City from Aldrac Entertainment Group, also known as AEG, and designed by Mads Flo, Karen Torendal Kaiser, and artist as Olga Kim. Now, Shake That City was, it, 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 I don't think it's doing anything super groundbreaking other than the way you're selecting your tiles this is a tile laying game on this little beautiful you know i what is it a five by five or six by six uh, even board that you are trying to fill up with all of these different um building uh, shapes that are essentially just different colors and the way that those colors are adjacent or next to each other or around each other or anything like that um are going to score you points but the way that you select the tiles comes from this little cube shaker. Hence why they're going calling the game Shake That City, where you kind of just shake up. There's there a whole bunch of different colored cubes. You put it down on the table. You kind of pop it. And then all of a sudden, there's this nine, uh, three by three grid of cubes. And those dictate the tiles that you're allowed to take and the pattern that those tiles have to go onto your board. That what makes this game ever so cool and puzzly because do I take that tile now because it's easy to pit in or do I take those tiles over there? They have a more complex pattern, but I can actually put them onto my board right now and hopefully that I can get things around them later. The puzzle of this game was spot on for us. I 
absolutely love it. Uh, everybody that I've showed this game to this year has absolutely fell in love with it. They just wish that it was a little bit more readily available. But Take That City really hit a real cool gaming chord in, uh, among, in, in here, around here in Mr. L Gaming. So Take That City, AEG Games, fantastic. I want to hear it talked about a little bit more. Another game that's lower on my list just because it's so brand new, but man, oh man, have we had a ton of fun with this one, and that is Snap Ship Tactics, um, designed by Josh Dirksen, uh, published by Snap Ships, and I believe it's also Linvader Studios. Um, wow, I was not expecting what was actually going to happen in this game. Snapship Tactics is essentially a miniatures skirmish game, but the toy factor on this game is through the roof because I actually had no idea what snap ships were. Apparently, you can actually get these things pretty much anywhere you go. I've even seen them at, uh, I've actually now recently seen them at like say like the dollar stores and dollar trees out there. Um, but you would actually be able to play them if you actually could actually have some cards around them. Essentially what snapships are, it's kind of like Lego-ish where you actually have to construct your ship ahead of time using all these cubes and the attachments and all of these things. So you get to actually design your model ship using all of these, the this, this snapping technology of how it all fits together. And then you take those ships and then you battle them in this little, this really quite simplified version of, I would very closely link this to X, uh, Star Wars X-Wing, but a very simplified set of actions that you can take based on these cards. And then you have action points that you can assign to the cards, represent the cubes, in order to fly your ship at certain distances with your measuring sticks and rotating them and then your firing your missiles or your guns at the other ship, just hopefully to destroy them and reduce their life points down to zero. And the games go by so quickly. Like we play, we, I think we spend more time building and customizing our ships at this point than we do actually playing the game because the gameplay actually goes by really quickly. And you can add more ships to have like, you know, 2v2, um, style of combat it actually has it boasts that it has a solo mode and there's automa cards that you can control that you can play by yourself against a automated um ship really impressed with what i've seen from snap ship tactics i'm starting to currently explore the idea of maybe picking up some expansion content they have some on their website currently i don't see any of it available in retail at this moment but i i i think that this is this is something that I think people need to pay attention to, especially if you um, are wanting to get into, say, a miniatures skirmish style game, but you don't want uh, a, a huge overhead cost on you. I think Snapship Tactics would be your best bet. My eight-year-old son loves this game. Again, I said the toy factor is through the roof, um, and gameplay itself is actually not not as involved as you think it would be for a miniatures style game. So, Napship Tactics, my number eight. Oh my gosh, we're having so much fun with it. Another game that we're having a lot of fun of around here was something I was expecting to actually like, but I thought I was going to like it a little bit more, but that's not going to take away from it. And that is Stonemeyer Games production by Jamie Stegmeyer Expeditions, the sequel to Scythe which it actually has no gameplay like Scythe at all, other than it's kind of set in that universe of this alternate Europa that now things have started to, we're, we're going out and we're exploring this landscape because some meteorites or some things have fallen from the sky and we're going out and exploring and hopefully that we can come away with the power rather than our opponents. Um, Really actually enjoy this game uh, as a solo game and as a two-player, even three-player experience. Um, getting above those ones, I don't think that this game is for us, but I love this game at the lower player counts, which are, game, which are things that we can actually get to the table really quite regularly. 
um, in our in our household. Um, so yes, you're controlling um, uh, these big, big, nice mechs, um, combining them with some character powers, and you're just exploring the land. The, the actions are really quite simple. There's only actually there's three, um, and most of the time you're only taking two of them on your turn. You're either moving, you're either um, gaining the resources or the benefits from wherever you are on the map, or you are um oh what's the what's the third there's there's the moving there's the gaining of the resources and then there is um probably oh no it's playing the cards because this is a very card heavy um game where you're going to be playing and trying to find some combos with your abilities and some of the cards in hand and it goes by relatively um snappy because on your turn you're actually most of the time you're only just taking two of those three actions um, and then it's passed on to the next player back and forth, back and forth. And it's just, I, I really, I really, really, really liked it. Um, there have been some mixed reviews on it, but I see that it's climbing the ranks of, um, board game geek quite fast. Uh, and I think for good reason, this one really hit a nice sweet spot, especially if you're gaming at lower player counts and you really like that scythe setting, but you don't have a game group to get scythe out uh, and you want to still enjoy that world, Expeditions may just be for you. That is my number seven of 2023 so far. And yeah, I thought I was going to like it more, but there are some other games that actually did say their things a little bit better, but not taking away, fantastic game, Expeditions, Joe Meyer Games. The next one is another AEG production, but in cahoots with Flat Out Games, and that is the... Follow up to Point Salad, and that is Point City from those rooms. And also, you know, designed by that flat out group of Molly Johnson, Robert Melvin, and Sean Stankwich. Um, I really enjoyed this as the follow up to Point Salad. Doesn't play anything like Point Salad, other than you are collecting cards to put inside your tableau, and eventually you're going to score a lot of points. That's it. That's where the comparison stops. But the way that this game works of always having to draft two cards and they have to be adjacent to each other in this matrix of cards. And whenever you draft a card, then a new card comes in play, but it's on its opposite side. They are dual sided, one side showing the resource and one side showing a building. You need those resources in order to buy the buildings. And as soon as you start buying buildings, well, most of them will be very um, engine buildy, where they will grant you a permanent resource, making some later buildings easier to build. And you do need that because they ramp up. There's levels one, two, and three difficulties of building. And of course, they, those level three ones score you bigger points, harder to construct. So hopefully you've built up an engine by that time. I kind of say that it's kind of very splendorish where it is that card play of collecting and then making things cheaper as you progress through the game. The gameplay does last a little bit longer than what we would like to for this game, but you know what? I, I was expecting that. Um, I wanted a little bit more. Uh, I wanted a little bit more out of my Point Salad experience, and Point City is delivering that in spades. So Point City, if you haven't had a chance to check this one out yet, definitely do. Um, you won't be, especially if you are a fan of the flat out games and the puzzly nature that they like to bring out to the games. You are a fan of Point Salad and you want something just a little bit beyond that complexity. Point City just may be for you. It's been a hit with a lot of people. I've sold many of copies of this throughout this year um, to gamers here around Saskatoon. So I think that you may enjoy this one as well, as long as you like those other style of games. All right. Another one that just recently hit the table a whole bunch of times the, the past month here. And I have to mention it because it's a cooperative game. Um, it's a very challenging cooperative game, which is what I really like about it. Um, it's got a really cool puzzle factor to it. It's got a really neat story, and I haven't seen a game with... Uh, a cooperative game with this type of table presence before, and that is Tesseract by James Fernhaber and published by Smirk and Laughter Games. Yeah, Smirk and Laughter, not Smirk and Dagger from what I've recently, um, but a subsidiary. Um, this one doesn't have any take that or anything. You're working together to try to solve the mystery of this mysterious cube 
that is developed. Uh, and then you're trying to, what you're eventually you're trying to do is you're trying to research or what are they going to they It's called confining all of the different aspects of the Tesseract before it completely disintegrates or it does enough bad things um, to you in the, across the gameplay. You really, really have to work together in order to make those um, sets and runs of dice in order to be able to contain them into this board because that is the only way you can win the game. And you really got to, really got to leverage your player character abilities with the other player character abilities at the table to really optimize the way that you're going to do this. I have only won this game once and I've probably already played it prob I want to say six to seven times now, but I've always felt like I could have done a little bit better. We probably could have won that game if we optimized our move. So there's the puzzle in this one. The actions yourself themselves, not very complicated. Taking cubes off of the Tesseract, transferring, trading between the other players, your own little special abilities, um, flipping dice, up or down one or value. Like these are the actions you're taking, but you gotta try to combo them together because you only get three of them on your turn. And one of them has to be trying to get some things onto that other board really got to work together it's a really great cooperative game um could possibly um have a alpha gamer situation evolve but i think that you really have to have the multiple voices around the table explain because there is so much of a puzzle going on and you have a very limited amount of time in order to solve that puzzle before you either lose the game or before you lose the game essentially Tesseract has got me absolutely enthralled with its experience, and I just absolutely love it. It doesn't take much. That, that, that cube looks like it takes a lot to um, construct. They actually really have a really nice, I, I'll call it like a Jenga sleeve, where you just kind of put it and you just dump dice into it, and they all form into a cube. Lovely. Snappy. Doesn't take much to set up and get going, and then you're in for a really fantastic 60 minutes of just brain crunchy. Let's see what we can do here in this game. So that's Tesseract by Smirk and Laughter Games. All right, let's get into this top five. Let's get into number four here, which is a game I realize I haven't played in a while, but I did play it a ton at the very beginning of the year, and I, I, and I don't hear anybody talking about it. And that's a shame because I... I thought this was one of the best ones of the year. It does really well what it does. That's Galileo Project um, from Sorry We Are French and designed by Adrian Hessling. Now, in Galileo Project, there seems like there's a lot going on. And believe me, there is. There's icons up the wazoo um, and a rule book that, you know, does a pretty okay job at explaining everything that's going on. Everything is wish it was laid out a little bit better maybe that's what the barrier to entry is here but once you get going man oh man you're in for a fun ride there are only two resources you're tracking in this game i just literally just i don't exactly remember what they're called but they're red resources and blue resources and you're either collecting red or you're collecting blue and depending on which ones you're collecting, that takes the types of cards you're going to build into your tableau. Yeah, this is a tableau builder set in space where you're kind of like, you know, trying to recruit investors into your project to, to uh, what is it, habitat or habitate? Oh my gosh, that's not even a word. Um, inhabit these different moons around Jupiter. And the way that you're going to do that is that you have to, you know, spend these red or blue credits and they will either give you instant benefits or they'll give you end of game scoring opportunities and but there's obviously there's ways of moving back and forth between the tracks you can flip from one another as long as you've been collecting these really nice high quality poker chips that are in the game uh so many opportunities for combos up the wazoo there's the four different planets on your player board and you're kind of out increasing on all of these different tracks, depending on the cards you're playing. I, I don't know. I'm not doing it any justice by explaining it to you. You just have to experience Galileo Project. It is 
one of the best Euro games that came out this year. And I don't hear anybody talking about it. Maybe it's because there's maybe a lack of availability on it. I don't know. It's for me, this was a Mr. Rao game. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, so I highly recommend everybody check it out. If you have a chance to, um, you won't be disappointed. Or maybe you will be disappointed. But if you like things that I like, I guarantee you, you're going to like this. That's Galileo Project by Sorry We Are French. All right, folks, let's get into that top three. And my next one, it's another Stonemaier Games production. It has got a lot of buzz lately. And for good reasons, we've been really enjoying Apiary around here. Um, Stonemaier Games production designed by Connie Vogelman. Got to give a shout out to the artist here. One of my, my favorite artists in the board gaming industry, and that's Quan Chai Moria. Oh my gosh, nailed the theme perfectly in their art. Now, Apiary. I went into this game. I heard about it. I heard of people talking about it. And I was like, that doesn't sound like it's doing really anything interesting or brand new. And believe me, it doesn't. But the way that they combine all these elements of worker placement and resource collection and unique player powers and all these other different things, tile laying, building, tableau stuff, it just all came together in a really good package and a very good product. Um, Apiary is topping some charts here this year that I've seen for very good reasons. Um, the gameplay itself, a lot of people will be able to get into this game relatively quickly. Um, there is a little bit of rules overhead that you have to get over, but once you get into it, I think that people are experiencing the true joys. There are people that are complaining a little bit about balancing, I guess, again, but those complainers come out of the woodworks every time that a Stonemaier Games production comes out. And yeah, there are some factions that seem that they're like that are really good but they all seem really good at the at what they do so you just kind of really you know leverage what they're doing try to do it the best that you to your abilities and everybody else at the table um apiary is i don't know it's just i think it's going to be one of those games that people are going to talk about for a little while now i don't think that this one's going to really die off um from what i've heard people saying and how the different levels of gamers that I have been um, interacting with around here in Saskatoon, um, people that are brand new into the hobby, people that are experienced, people that are in the middle of the road, all talking about Apiary and how wonderful of a game it is. So I have to put it on my chart. I enjoyed it way more than I ever thought. It actually has a really good solo um mode to it which you know that that helps its score in my books and i've had absolutely great times playing this one with multiple different people so apiary number three all right now no word of a lie this is intentional that my top two games are my top two solo experiences of 2023 I played a lot of solo games this past year and these two games have been rocking it for me love them to death there's nowhere near I don't think I've played any other games more than what I've played these two games this past year my number two game of 2023 is comes to us from Garfield Games and Renegade Game Studios and that is The Legacy of You uh, designed by Shem Phillips and of course the artist is Sam Phillips and the legacy of you is a campaign game solo solo only you can only play this by yourself I guess you could play it two players with two people just kind of making the decisions together but playing through this story of constructing these canals and trying to ward off the barbarian tribes that are coming to attack your villages, but you're also having to manage the flood that is also coming at your coming coming at you, and all neatly tied together in a Euro style kind of like worker placement resource management game. And the resource management is heavy in this game. 
It's also you got to manage your deck of cards because that is your timer in this game is your deck of cards. So you want to build it up, but you also want to kind of shed it every now and then because if you shed cards, you get really good benefits along the way. And you really got to really time it perfectly. It got a really fantastic puzzle. It's got a really cool story behind it. And as you do things, as you um, play through the game, you're going to unlock new game elements that are going to come into play and you have to deal with them or they're going to they're either going to hinder you they're going to benefit you um and those the way that they come out is going to be in a different order every single time that you play this game and the way that you win your campaign is that you actually just have you just have to win seven games but you can lose your campaign if you lose seven games Every time that you win the game, the game gets a little bit more difficult. Every time that you lose the game, well, that tries to give you a little bit of a, bo a boost or a benefit to try to maybe hopefully do it um, a little bit. I'm playing through this game right now on my channel. You can check out all of the videos on, of Legacy of You over uh, uh, on the channel here. I've slowly been releasing those gameplay videos. It's just fantastic if you're a solo gamer and you're a euro gamer at that too i got a feeling you're gonna love legacy of you just as much as i have so far this year but that's just only my number two game what has been my number one game well if you follow the channel uh, uh, quite closely there will be no surprise of what my number one game of 2023 is and that is Ashes Reborn, Red Reigns. There have been two boxes so far for Red Reigns this year so far. Um, this is coming to us from Plat Hat Games and designed by Nick Conley, who is also the lead developer on the game. Ashes Reborn. It's funny how I started the list with a competitive head-to-head -head game that turned into a solo cooperative um, experience. And I'm ending my list. That was once a competitive game, now can be played solo or two-player cooperative with this Red Reigns system. Essentially, we are now in this world of Ashes Reborn. We're going to be taking our Phoenix Born and constructing our decks and hopefully take on these big, massive chimeras that have come and are plaguing our world. Um, we have two so far that have been released, the Corpse of Byros and Frostwild Scourge, with a third one coming out here very, very shortly, The Blight of Nevermore. And I am just soaking this up. I love it now that I can take my one of my favorite card games, actually not even one, my favorite card game of all time, and now I can actually play it in a cooperative or even solo experience, of game, a player versus the environment um, scenarios. Um, there's various levels of difficulty, and they come with brand new player decks and player cards that you can construct and modify your current existing decks. And they give you brand new Phoenix Born specific cards for your Phoenix Borns to already, already amp up the tons of variability that you get with Ashes Reborn. But now you get to do it in this solo environment. This game is fantastic. I play it a lot. I've got a lot of videos on my channel. There are going to be more coming out in 2024. Please stick around, especially if you follow me in the month of April, which I always dedicate to Ashes Reborn. I call it Ashes April. And this upcoming year is going to be no different. I'm going to be a lot more Red Rains. Um, love it. Of course, if you watch this channel, you know how much I love this game have to check it out it's fantastic um yeah i'm just gonna i'm just gonna leave it at that all right folks those have been my top gaming experiences so far in 2023 please let me know how did i do do any do we have any crossovers on games that i've enjoyed in 2023 with what you've enjoyed in 2023 so far um, if you also want to check out my video on my games of 2023 that I have yet to play, check the description of this video. I'll have a link there for you. And yeah, coming up next in this series, take a look at my top 10 games that are coming out in 2024 that I'm really, really excited to try and play. 
All right, folks, I've been Ryan of Mr. L Gaming. And of course, if you're enjoying the content on this on these videos, please hit a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And that notification bell is there to get notified every time that new videos like these come available to you. And I go live every Tuesday night, and I'm always playing something just a little bit different every single day. All right, folks, thanks for watching. I've been Ryan. Cheers, y'all. Take care.